and going into battle. That's why we say preparation exceeds, precedes execution. That when you go into battle, be careful if you're not defeated. That the whole house. Here he says, the hand of the Lord. This is not my messenger. This is God's word. He says, the hand of the Lord was upon me. And he carried him out in the spirit. My goodness. I wonder what God is showing us in the realm of the spirit. What God is teaching us this year. Because I told you this is a, a year to hear. Somebody say that to me. This is a year to hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Are you following what I'm saying? What the Spirit says is that we have to be so much careful that we are not going to battle and be defeated. When I come back from the battlefield, I must be standing. And I thank you for that word that we must put on the, the helmet and the boots of salvation, the, the, the peace of Almighty God. Preparation. The hand of the Lord was upon me. And I'm grateful that the hand of God it, it, it identifies all through that uh, Ezekiel 37 and throughout the book. He uses a little phrase, the hand of God was upon me. You know what it means? It means that God is identifying himself with the prophet. That the prophet is not operating in his own power or wisdom. No. The hand of God. The hand of God was upon me. And the hand of God can strengthen you. The hand of God can stabilize you. The hand of God carried me. I was in the spirit of, and the hand carried me. John the Baptist, John the Revelator was saying that I was in the, on the Lord's day, the spirit of, elevated him up by passing up principalities and powers up into the third dimensions and heard things up that was unexplainable for a man to hear. And it's John the fourth chapter. So I want you to see that he carries him into the, the realm of the spirit uh, and he sees the vision. Uh, but in chapter 36, uh, he says, I'm going to give you a new heart uh, and a new spirit. My goodness. God does a surgery and he says to prophesy it over the people of Almighty God uh, that he removes uh, the heart of stone. And he gives them a heart of flesh. The reason why we can be suffering defeat after defeat is that because the heart is rebellious against the things of Almighty God. Hold on, I'm going to get to a point where you get happier. But for now, I want to interject the part when God challenges us. And he says, I will sprinkle the water upon you. In other words, and that we are defied and we are corrupted and we need to be washed by the blood and the sprinkling of the water of Almighty God. And sometimes it's not the word, it's the hearer that is hearing the word of Almighty God. If the receiver can receive it, and he says the prophesy over the whole house of Israel, that God is hated because God become rebellious against the voice and against the things of Almighty God. But this is the year of implantation. This is the year that God begins to transform you on the inside and then it manifests on the outside. You cannot play God because God created the game, he created the universe and the world and everything in it. So we can run and hide and skip and play God. The prophet declares that God is doing a surgery among us. Somebody better shout amen and say God is challenging us. But 2023 is not hip hip and it's not hopscotch. Glory to God is the word of the living God that penetrates to the heart of the world. Marrow transforming and delivering us. Oh Lord. Can you handle this kind of preacher? Somebody say revival time. Yes. When God sends revival, God always sends a challenge. You just can't go into revival. So the implantation of Almighty God. Somebody say lift your hands up and say give me a new heart, a new spirit, a fresh anointing, a fresh fire of the power of the Holy Ghost that the things of this world that the things of the enemy will bind us it will bound us but I'm liberated in my spirit somebody shout implantation somebody shout a new heart a new mind a new spirit I'm downloading something in your life I'm going to God that I will sprinkle the water upon you say 
thank the Lord. And then after that, uh, he says, I'm going to end, give you an impartation. Somebody shout like impartation. I want you to understand that he says unto him, at the age of 30, he's going to prophesy, and some will not hear. The problem with the world is not governments. The problem in the world is we have an enemy. And the enemy of our soul becomes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But the Bible says, I will restore to you up the years that the cankerworm, the caterpillar, the power of the locusts have taken from you. I will restore it. Somebody say, God will restore it. Shall this with me, God will bring it back to life. Yeah. Say it one more time. God will bring me back to life. God will bring me. Look at the miracle in the valley. That the valley, he carries him out in the spirit. And he says, walk about and inspect. And the prophet, like a CSI investigator, begins to inspect the valley full of bones. Not only full of bones, but he says the bones are very dry. Oh Lord, oh Jesus, help me now. The bones have become dry. Why? The bones was defeated and left in the open valley for years and years. And we have to hold on when you go through the same cycle. How long when you go through the same mess? How long when you be defeated in the valley? But I have news for you that we serve a God. He's God in the valley. He's God in the mountain tops. He's God wherever you go. He's suffering. He's potent. And he's powerful. Amen. The hand of the Lord was upon me. And he carried me out in the spirit in an open car. Open. I wonder, could you imagine this was the whole house of Israel? This was the whole military force. Went out into battle and got defeated. They, went, they got defeated because there was no ark of the covenant. There was no presence of, of, of Almighty God in their lives. If there is no presence, don't go. Are you following me? So the implantation of a new heart and a new spirit in your life, a new fervor and a new zeal of God. And he says, he carried me out in the valley. And he sees the house of Israel in the valley full of dry bones. It is full of bones scattered. It's scattered everywhere. It's helter skelter. This is no year when you begin to get focused. Focused with God and concentrated with God. It tells you that God can carry you. Somebody say God can carry me. He carried me. He carried me to be some through some things. He carried me through a season. How many of you ever went through a season? And you think that you're going to be married uh, and left for dead. Uh, this time the enemy didn't leave them for dead. Uh, he left them on the open path. But God can carry us. Somebody say, God can carry me. And he carried me. And he carried me. He carried, he carried me. He lifted me up. Glory to God. Into spaces and places. Uh, glory to God. And the bones uh, were dry. But if you see how God operates, the spirit was always moving. Somebody say, spirit move now. The Spirit of God was moving. Uh, and the Bible says, look at the progression. He says unto them, he says unto the prophet, preach uh, unto the bones. Uh, could you imagine the question thrown at the prophet, uh, son of man, uh, when he looked at it, uh, not only was it dry uh, and scattered uh, and preached out, uh, it was very dry, uh, it was scattered. It had been dead for a long time. Uh, but I want you to know uh, that you can be dead and stinking, thinking for three long days. Uh, and he has your audacity to send his man. Jesus comes and said to Martha and Mary, Where have you laid him? Glory to God. Where have you placed your brother John? And they say, Come and see, Lord. And the Bible says, Jesus said, Love of us. Come forth. Oh Lord. Because he has that kind of power. He has that kind of authority. That if he called Lazarus, my goodness, he would have emptied out the whole graveyard. But I came to announce to you that there was one thing God can empty a whole church and raise up a whole church and call a whole church back to life, back to prayer, back to the anointing, back to word, back to prophecy, back to the gift of the Spirit of God, to play with God. Because when God sends the Spirit, there's a shaking, there's a noise. Somebody begin to clap your hands. Clap your hands, clap your hands.
put your mask on for the senior uh, or seniors. Put the mask on. Live, you shall live. That's why I came to prophesy. You will live and not die. You will live and not die, said the Lord. And he carries him. We get back to the text. He carries him out. And he sees the bones scattered. And he has the audacity, audacity to say, Lord, only you know. O oh, sovereign God, the creator of the ends of the earth. And he tells them to prophesy over, speak to them the word of the Lord. Many people want miracles, signs, and wonders, but they don't want the word. The word is a constitution. The word brings it to pass. It's life, it's rhema, it's powerful. Sharper than a two-edged sword. That's the word of God. It's living. It's active. And the man goes. Uh, could you imagine the assignment uh, to go out into the open field? And you're prophesying. Uh, and I'm looking at this chair here. And I'm prophesying. You, you know God will tell you do some crazy things. Crazy things. Uh, and he says to Peter, come, come out of the boat. Uh, whoever here, when faith is active uh, and faith is activated, he comes and says, Peter, jump out of the boat. Lord, Peter said, Lord, if it's you, come. All Peter was looking at Pastor Billy was even the voice of God telling him to come and come in. Because he was walking not on the water, but one great man said he was walking on the principle of the word. Oh Lord. Somebody say come. Peter, God says unto him, come Peter. And Peter, my goodness, you have to be focused on Jesus. You have to be looking at Jesus. Our brother said that on Tuesday night, that we must look at Jesus. And when we take our eyes off Jesus, we start to sink. We start to go down. Because God is calling us to be focused. Somebody say focus 23. Yes, this is focus 2023. This is the power of Almighty God. I told you that we are dealing with our Zima, the shepherd king. That he's my shepherd. If I look at him, he's going to provide. If I look at him, he's going to protect. If I look at him, he's going to provide and protect and heal and deliver glory to God. He will shield us from every end. This is the year that God is challenging us. This is a year that God is pushing us. This is a year of wind and fire. Somebody say wind and fire. This is a year of the wind. This is a year of the power of Almighty God. Some will say recession. I beg to differ. I say revival. Some will say lack and scarcity. I say abundance. A hundredfold blessing in the economy of Almighty God. Some may say doors are shut, but I came with some keys. Somebody say preacher, unlock some doors for me. Preacher, prophesy doors open for me. Preacher, prophesy some new organs and new spirits. Glory to God, because you have given us the keys of the kingdom. Whatsoever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever we loose on earth is loose in the heavens. Glory to God. The prophet comes. And he begins to preach. The prophet is preaching. I, I, I'm sure he was preaching, Oh, suffering God, you are great. Oh, Lord, we magnify you. God, there's nothing too hard for you to do. Oh, God, with man, it shall be impossible, impossible with man, but very possible with you. With man, it can happen, but with God, all things can happen in your life. And begins to prophesy. And all of a sudden, somebody say, Obedience. Somebody say obedience brings the blessings. He is obeying the voice of God. And the prophet hears the word. First you have to hear your word. And God sends him out and he investigates. And he sees the devastation and the destruction of this army. Wonder in the open heart. For you to die in the open valley is embarrassing. For, for the enemy to leave you there, I was, I was reading all the Babylonians will persecute you and the Assyrians and, and all these things I was going to do to the children of God. And they would, they would kill them and leave them there for the vultures uh, to back on them. It's a death, uh, they die, but, but it's a death with no honor. Leave there. Saw death all around. The prophet goes. And not only did God tell him to pass from about them, 
In one translation, he is told to sit among them. Oh Lord. He, he gets his seat and he sits right there. And those of you who might see this video, we prophesy new life to you. Somebody shout new life. And those of you may be stable for no good reason. We prophesy God will bring you back to life in the mighty name of Jesus. Because he can bring you back out of the slumber and out of the stupor. He can bring you back. Somebody show the me that God can bring us back to life. God can resurrect them. Only he can do it. Because he alone gets the glory. Somebody said he gets the glory. Amen. So, so, Pastor David, he gives him a difficult assignment. And the assignment is that he must walk into the valley and prophesy in the realm, I want you to see, in the realm of the spirit of his preaching. This is not, this is not a real reality thing that is happening. This is a vision. The prophet sees into the realm of the spirit. And he sees there devastation. And he sees death. And then Bishop Raymond Boca said this to you. He says, it seems like we are not in the land of the living anymore. It seems like the land of death. Then there should be more life. Yeah? The land of you turn here, you turn there, somebody go. Are you not seeing? Somebody say, wake up that. You not see it? Quick like that. Life is like vapor. And he brings him up and he sees the destruction, the devastation, and he sees death all around. What is the response when death is all around you? The Bible says life and death is in the power of your and they are not which are the food here of it tells me that what you say becomes a manifestation of this night of heaven. That's why you have to speak life. And in our my person there's a short life. Life, life, more abundantly. I came to give you life more abundantly. It comes to steal, to kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come to give you abundance. To give you a soul kind of life. Nothing missing, nothing lacking. This is resurrected life. So he prophesies. He says the word, and then the word goes forth, and the Bible says all of a sudden that he hears a noise. Oh Lord, you have to love this vision. He hears a noise because the spirit is moving, and he hears a rattling. Somebody say rattle, rattle, rattle. And then he said, there was a rattling, there was a rattling, there was a shaking, and the Bible says this is a mystery here that the bones came together. That could imagine being disjointed. They were defeated. Some parts were buried under the, the sand. And there's a rumbling. There's a shaking. Only God can do it. Only God can bring that joint back to this joint to fit. And that every joint may want a supplier. And every joint may be fit. Could you imagine that?
Lord. That God, God was saying to the prophet, uh, maybe he saw that he's in Babylon uh, and he's transported uh, into Israel and Jerusalem uh, and he sees them defeated uh, because of the Assyrians uh, and the Babylonians. How many of you know that in the last days the enemies will try to come and destroy us? Not physically, more of a spiritual level. More of you to go try. Could you imagine this man of dryness? Have you ever been through things where you feel dry? You're praying and, 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 and we've been honest. Come on, this is revival. Somebody say, Revive me now. How many of you know I'm a revivalist also? Yeah, I'm not just a preacher and a pastor. I'm, I'm, I've been sent to, to preach up unto dead things, uh, unto the shape back uh, to life. Uh, but, I, but I just put the cup, uh, things could happen uh, in the life that's a power and the anointing of God. Don't so just look at, at my ministry and think I want to mention it. Uh, I can turn prophet, uh, I can turn priest, uh, I can turn apostle, uh, I can turn evangelist uh, because I'm gifted uh, by Almighty God. Uh, so anybody say he's gifted, he's gifted. Yeah, don't think I'm not gifted. So I, I'm gifted. I was I was called by the age of 16. Let me boast a little bit. I was handpicked uh, by God uh, by the age of 16 years. Uh, and I had the fire touch me. Uh, somebody shall shout, had the fire touch me. Yeah, the hand of fire. Let me pose a little bit in the Lord. I was chosen when I was 60 years old. And now I'm 38, going in 39. And he has kept me. And they couldn't take me out. Because they're power. Locked up like Jeremiah. I got fire shut up in my bones. I'm like Jeremiah. I'm the hammer of the word. I'm the mighty God. When you're in. When I turn the cap. I'll preach you until you walk shaking. Not me, but the power of God. I'll preach you until you start shaking in your spirit. I'll preach you until your mind gets right. I'll preach you until the plans are going to disappear. I'll preach you until you are, until the new heart comes. I'll preach you until you are, until this whole church is packed up. You know how many people are supposed to come this morning? And there's a force pushing them. That's why by, to, by next week you're going to see this whole house packed up. Call up your friends, call up your neighbor, tell them he's praying for people. I'm going to pray for every sick person. I'm going to lay hands on you and you're going to see the revival power of Almighty God. Somebody say, God gets the glory. Yeah, God gets the glory. Ever so often he goes back and he raises up a voice and it's a voice for the latter generation that they will know that they can stand. One man can stand. One John the Baptist, one Ezekiel, one Daniel, one man could stand and shake down a whole community. And Jesus, it was expedient that one man would die for the whole nation. My goodness. Somebody said the power of one. Yeah, go ahead and But you go back home. You have to know that the power of one. Could you imagine the power of two uh, and if the unity of the house comes together, if one can cause a resurrection, a uh, wonder or two, uh, one can chase a thousand uh, and two can put ten thousand uh, to fight the glory to God. Uh, so it is good uh, and pleasant to bring you to dwell. Uh, if unity is like two falling from the woman, it's falling, it's flowing, uh, the anointing of God. And it's there when the anointing is flowing. He says, I command the blessing of God upon you. I heard you say, command the blessing. Somebody say, command it. I'm talking about divine commandments. A divine command. When you command it, based on the law and principles of the word, it's going to come to pass. And somebody says it's going to come to pass. I want you to understand. Look at the, the progression step by step. Somebody say, progressive restoration. Look at, he started to prophesy. And I want you to get this. Because I want to teach you this. That what jumped out at me in the text is that God did not tell him to prophesy everything one time. God told him to prophesy the bulls. Somebody said restoration, progression of restoration. Pastor Gabe, he prophesied the bulls. He saw the bulls coming together, Sister Mary. He tells them to prophesy flesh and sinews upon it. Could you imagine? In the vision, God is forming a formation of a man, of a warrior, a commando. Oh Lord, somebody say, make me a commando. 
What business for war? A commando, they can look at they, they, they can drop you off, but your business for it, your weather for it, and you put for commandos. Look at the challenge, and the conflict, and the confrontation, and the spirit of God. But he says, I'm forming a commando. I'm forming a kind of man, a kind of woman, who can take blows, and take licks in the realm of the spirit. But ever so often, when you think you get the tongue, a box right or back, you ever draw a cat or a rope, and draw that cat.
because it had a form that it was produced. It had a form. They passed back the next morning and the disciples knew that he cursed the tree and they saw the tree wither and dry. The, the commandos here, they stood lifeless on the ground and he says, but there was no breath in there. The word breath there threw up. There was no Holy Spirit or, or spiritual life up in there. And you can have a form of godliness, but you can deny the power of there. Oh Lord, help us never to just have a form of godliness. And not to deny the power of Almighty God. So he tells them for the remedy for that. He says, oh, there's no place and space that God can reach you. He says, oh, prophesy man of God to the four winds. The east, west, north, and south. Somebody said there's no place that he cannot touch. I don't care how far you think you go. I don't care how far David said I made my bed in that he's there. The four winds, one Holy Spirit, but he says command the wind. Such power was to come. Wind and fire and power. He says prophesy to the wind. How many of you know the wind is great destruction? You see in Texas and all these places with tornadoes, it can just pass through just for about, about 25 seconds and ravish the whole place. It can turn the whole place upside down. That's the power I'm talking about. Now the wind of God, he started to prophesy. And the wind started to shake and blow upon the slain. And the Bible says, right, he prophesied and it entered them. When breath comes into you, know, when the ruach of God, remember in Genesis 2, 2 and 7, he built a man and then he, he breathed into Adam and the breath of life. And the man became what? A living soul. I want you to know, you have to ever ask yourself, ever so often ask yourself, what am I becoming for God? What are you becoming for God? Built Adam animated. Adam never had a child. He was built a full grown man. He breathed into him. Adam stood up. Adam stood up. When God breathes into you, I don't have to beg you to come to the house of God. When God breathes into you, I don't have to beg you to love him. When God breathes into you, because yeah, there's a mystery. And you don't have to force me to love my mother. I came out of her. You don't have to beg me now. Because I, she pushed me out. I'm part of her. Glory to God. She's part of me. Glory to God. When God pushed us out, I don't have to hide from God. I don't know why I'm hiding. What happened? Are you tracking with me? Why are you hiding? Guess, guess why people still the bread is there's no bread there's no spirit there's no vitality I know a good word is being preached I know a good word whenever I show up the word must come because I dwell with God you follow me you think I want you think I wanted to be a preacher I was happy by God you follow me you think I want to preach and people question your message and ask you if you hear from God? Huh? You think, I'm, no, I haven't choose this. I didn't choose him, but he chose me before the foundation of the world. Could you imagine going to places and the question the authority and the anointing of power? But I didn't ask for this. He put it upon me. So what he did the works with me and with him. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. You know, I want you to be a football player. Yeah, be a prophesier. Yes. Are you following me? It is the Spirit of God. Adam, the hidden. Let me bring it to a close. For revival. You know, you know Paul preached. Touch your neighbor and say, stay away, stay away. You know, for revival, long ago. You know, for revival, when the world has been preached, yeah, you try to be a leader. In the baptism spirit. The dropsy, we call it dropsy in the red. For some last time on the third time that I they call it dropsy spirit. And good word is spirit. They call it the Levatian spirit. It's heavy. 
that word is being preached in the back of the guess why? Because the word is cutting out. The word is transforming. Somebody have to do it in worship, great praise. But when it comes to the antidote and it comes to medicine, the drops here, they're blending the plenty of crystals and the dropping, the drops in the drops in spirit. They can't hear the word. Guess why? Because God they don't want to grow. They don't want to grow and meditate on God. They don't want to grow in the things of God. So we got a drum This year is our preacher. I want to know it. We can't do it still. I don't know. No. Glory to God. But look at the beauty of the things. Let me get back. I know you're tired. I can preach for two hours. I know you can't handle that. I studied for five days. Glory to God. I want you to get this. That the bread came into them. Here's a revelation of the text. I heard you pray, Pastor. I heard you pray. Give a revelation of knowledge, God. And I saw something in the text. And it blew my mind. That they stood up an army. Now, if God is raising up Priyako to be an army, we need to go on combat. But first, we, we need to have preparation before execution. Eh? We need to be filled with the power of the Spirit. Because some of the, because God will have to direct us now where to go. Somebody said in the target. So we are not, when we are going, I'm not just going hands a skeleton and running like a chicken without a head. No, no, no. We're going to have to hit the target. And watch this. The, the army stood up. Somebody said, raise up an army, Lord. Somebody said, I'm a soldier in the army. Oh, Lord. I saw something. That the commando is well equipped. The commando can stay out in the cold. The commando can go without food for days. In fact, when I studied the USA uh, IDA system, to build, to clone a soldier in America is $2 million. By now it has won. The IDA, interceptor body armor. Before America will send you to battle, they put on an armor, a high-tech armor. You will think it's a pen, but it's a grenade. You will think it's a pen, but it's a laser. The, man, the, the commando is so trained, a commando is so trained that it can watch you with one, how many of you know Bruce Lee? In the set of Bruce Lee, you can have a one inch punch and, 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 and throw it up. Yeah, you ever heard that? The man has so much uh, inherent power, so much meditation and strength in his life that they showed you in a video that it's right there. When you go out to battle, you have to know the track and pull back. You have to know to drop the gospel and the kingdom of God and pull back. Because the enemy has some commandos. <laughs> the, enemy, the enemy has some guys out there and some warriors uh, and witches and warlocks. Uh, that I, they, I, I went down to a, a little pastor's training and I let him this all time. And while we are having worship, uh, the pan man and their plane. And one of, the, one of the guys said, night and day they play. Somebody said, night and day. Night and day they play. 500, night and day. They play. Man, you know any bad man spirit in you? When that spirit in your hand begins to move, uh, that's why the church needs a good dose uh, of the Holy Ghost. Uh, so when the spirit uh, begins to move, uh, sometimes it's too hard. Uh, I mean, like, the, the, the heart is too hard of stone, uh, and nothing can touch you, uh, and nothing can speak to you, uh, because you think, uh, yeah, you got it. man practicing night and day, and the church, Practice. <laughs> the church had not no practice. The bishop was saying, hey, look at the dedication and commitment. Thank God, Brother Larry and Sister Nicola came. I saw them praying yesterday. I was good. I was good, you know. While all of us were home, they were praying for the service. They were praying uh, for their uh, execution of worship. Uh, that uh, the enemy will take it and hearts uh, will receive it. Glory to God. So he has stood up. Thank, thank God for Pastor Bill here. He always made me tell, you know, God sent him. Uh, Brother Jesse, Pastor David, men who love, they do it unto the Lord. Uh, don't think I'm paying them, they do it unto God. Uh, wholeheartedly. Uh, they love God. Uh, they remember what God did for them in the way. Can you remember when you were in that dry place? When you were in that barren place? And then you see that, that's it. But I love what the prophet said. He said, Lord, only you know. Oh, so it came and I hear it says, Oh, sovereign God, only you know. Oh, sovereign God. Oh, all powerful God, you know. Oh, all potent God, you know. You see my end from the beginning. Oh, Lord, 
I love how God sees it. But right, he sees my end. He sees me quite dark. I don't know how long I love, but God sees my end. He saw the prophet Ezekiel, the master prophet, like Isaiah with eagle eyes. He says, don't only see the dry bones. I'm going to show you glory in the temple in 38. He says, when they open up Jerusalem, that the bones will be revived, and new life, and new power will come, because he's commanded by God. Somebody say, I command restoration in my life. I command it, I command it. Yes, yes, yes. I command the glory to God. Come on, brother, come on, brother. I command restoration. I want you to stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. This is a hard part now. Give me some gates a little faster. Give me a little symbols. Hallelujah. 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 I want you to see it. That you can be an army. An army soldier, a commando. And yet still be in a grave. Bible says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. I can command the blessing upon me. So that I prophesied as I was commanded. Not that he wanted to, but he was commanded by God to do it. The Bible says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, magically, Tara was shaken. And bones came together, bone to his bone. Bone to his bone. Not bone to my bone, but bone to his bone. It tells you that I'm coming back. Touch your, touch your own body and say, I'm coming back. Tell your body, come into divine order. Yeah. Tell it, come into divine order. Divine order. When the man goes straight up, it's a good thing. All the time, all the time. When the man goes straight up, divine order. It's all the time you need that. Then I'm going to decree and declare something. I'm going to command something. Whenever I draw the man is going to decree and declare or command something. That is how it's going to happen. And he prophesied and he says, Bone to his bone. I can't get nobody else bone. I can't get nobody else members. Glory to God. You can't get somebody else blessing. What God has in store for you is in store for you. Are you following me? What's for you, Brother Larry, is for you. What's for you, Sister Jacqueline, is for you. What is for you, Brother Brian, is for you. Nobody else can take it out. Nobody else can, can pull it away. Because the bone is coming to this bone. The Bible says this. I want to read it for you as you close up. When I beheld, though the sinews and the flesh came up, somebody said, God is going to take me up. Come on, declaration of time. Somebody said, uh, when I beheld, though the sinews and flesh came up, somebody said, it's time to go up. It came up upon them. What's this? And skin covered them. Somebody said, cover me, Lord. It covered them above. Your covering is not from this side of heaven. It's coming from above. My goodness. It's time to manifest in the realm of the spirit. I want you to see it when I saw it. But there was no breath in them. Verse 9. Then he said unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man. Come from the four winds of breath. And breathe upon the slave that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me. Verse 10. And the breath came into them. And they lived. And stood up. They lived and stood up. Upon their feet and exceeding great arm. But watch this. The Bible says in verse 13. Verse 12 says, Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, all my people, I will open your graves. In biblical teaching, we call it the cosmic grave. That you can be the house of God and yet be in a graveyard mentality. Lose them. When Jesus raised Lazarus back to life, because he was a rabbi and a priest, he couldn't touch the dead. And he says to his disciples,